My wife and two kids and I moved here from the Twin Cities in July of 2013 when I started as superintendent of Pequot Lakes Public Schools. It didn't take long for me to see that life would probably be pretty lonely and difficult if I was a student of color or a student that is gay or transgender or living in poverty in our school district community. The chatter in the hallways, some of our district practices, the comments made by some adults at events, and the general tone of conversations all around the community made me feel really concerned for any student that might be perceived as different. It'd be hard enough to be a student that might feel different from everyone else, but the unwelcoming tone of some of the side comments and jokes I heard would certainly feel overwhelming to some students and even some adults. I kept thinking about our former neighbors and family friends when we lived just south of the Twin Cities that happened to be two men that are married with two young boys and one of the guys is black and deaf while the other is Caucasian. I knew for certain that these great friends of ours would not feel welcomed into our district community the way my family had been accepted. I felt a real sense of urgency to do what I could to help these marginalized students and families in this community feel more welcomed and more valued in the place they call their home. Unfortunately, making meaningful change that sticks is a slow process. It took me a few years to align our district to a strategic plan with solid core values and to get the right leaders in the right seats with empowered leadership teams to begin tackling real equity work. We had our leadership teams working on creating a safe and welcoming and collaborative environment. And then about three years ago, we had the opportunity to send three of our teacher leaders to be trained as facilitators with the National SEED Project. SEED is an acronym that stands for Seeking Educational Equity and Diversity, and it's designed to help educators cultivate healthy dialogue and learning work that leads to an appreciation of diversity and making positive change happen. Our three teachers facilitated a nine month long seed learning cohort following that training that included about one third of our faculty. And then half of them chose to continue into the next year for another round of learning and rich discussions about issues tied to power, privilege, race, gender, and poverty. It was winter in that first year of seed in our district that I saw and began to hear a noticeable shift in the way conversations were taking place. And by the second year, regional efforts were spun up through our regional service co-op and our administrative team started its own book studies. The following year, we had another third of our staff sign up for seed training cohort and our school leadership teams began facilitating school-wide discussions regarding equity issues, creating much more system-wide awareness of the issues that we certainly needed to work to address. The most rewarding part for me in the work to tackle equity issues is actually seeing evidence that behaviors are starting to change. In the wake of the murder of George Floyd last spring, a staff member caught wind that some other staff were purchasing some retro Pequot Lakes Indians jerseys because that used to be the mascot of the school district many years ago. Our equity coordinator sent out an all staff email explaining how wearing that as a staff member at school is disrespectful to the many native students that we have in our schools today. That of course created a big reply all email debate. But to me, it was so rewarding to see a staff member in our district have the courage to call out and confront an adult behavior that was unwelcoming to some of our students and families. We certainly had some other evidence of our work, like the LGBTQ student groups that were created more diverse resources in our libraries and curriculum, and the hiring of some staff that are people of color. But this was one of just a few times that I saw an adult actually call out an adult behavior on behalf of our minority students. For me, this was evidence to celebrate that four or five years of empowering leadership teams, training facilitators, getting the right leaders in the right seats, and intentionally stirring up those difficult conversations and holding an equity lens up to our decisions was finally resulting in some positive change. We have been very intentional in our school district about avoiding a top-down, 
heavy-handed approach to driving equity work knowing that it would result in significant and probably high-profile pushback that would ultimately take us backward in this rural Minnesota culture. Instead, our efforts to plant seeds, provide training, to empower natural leaders, to get students engaged in the work, and to stir up and weave together thousands of purposeful conversations that cultivate relationships and create momentum is showing evidence of positive change in our district culture. Every student deserves a hometown and a school that welcomes them and embraces who they are to their core. While Pequot Lake schools certainly have a long way to go in this important and intentional work, it's very rewarding for me to know that our district culture is significantly safer and more welcoming today than it was just seven years ago. It is indeed difficult and slow work, but I'm so very grateful for the many courageous staff members and people in our greater community that have been part of leading these important efforts. I'm truly looking forward to being a partner in this work going forward here in rural central Minnesota. Mm -hmm.